Hello everyone, it's Lakuya here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. On today's episode, we're going to be telling you the absolute insane history of Lysol, and how this, the cleaning spray, was used as a form of birth control in history. Yes, again, we're talking Lysol, like the cleaning agent, the disinfecting tool, yeah, that Lysol. Now, I'll just go ahead and say that there are many products in history that I could probably tell the story of, and just how absolutely terrible they were when they were introduced. That right there could probably become its own little series right there, but of course, when we're talking about things that are extra disturbing, I really wanted to start off with Lysol because this one and his journey is just a bit of an absolute insane one. If you are confused right now, then you better go ahead and listen up because we are going to jump into this right now. Now, to begin, the first Lysol brand antiseptic disinfectant, this was something that was introduced in 1889 by a man by the name of Gustav Rappenstrock. The entire purpose of this was to help end a cholera epidemic that was happening in Germany, and I'm just going to go ahead and let you know right now, cholera is a very nasty disease, and so I really don't blame someone for trying to to make something that was powerful in order to be able to fight it. Like this, this thing sucks. And in addition to fighting cholera, the product was also going to see widespread distribution in order to use in 1918 in order to fight the deadly Spanish flu epidemic. Of course, when I'm talking about Lysol being used in order to fight these diseases, I'm not talking about it being used as a medication. You're not injecting it into your system like some people would advocate for bleach or anything like that. No, 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 no. This is still something that is being used as a disinfectant in order to kill germs, the bacteria, the viruses, the things that could be causing disease that people want to get rid of, which is really not the bad part when talking about this product. The really messed up part is that unfortunately people would be using it for a variety of other things despite its initial intended purpose. You see, my friends, by the year 1911, doctors had already at this point recorded around 193 cases of Lysol poisonings, as one of the things that people would use Lysol for was to off themselves. I'm not going to use stronger words, because if I do, then unfortunately this is going to run into some problems here on YouTube. See, in the early days of Lysol, the formula that they had then was far stronger than what the spray that we use all willy-nilly nowadays is now. It contained a certain type of chemical called Cressels that were very bad for you, to say the least. Now, I am not going to get into to the science of this because I, I th I'm not a science channel. I, there is no way in hell that I actually am. And I cannot relay to you the intimate knowledge that would be required in order to provide any kind of real confidence to the subject matter. I just, I, I can't. But in short, Cressels are substances that when they're inhaled, ingested, or applied to the skin, they can be extremely harmful. Effects that have been observed in people include irritation and burning of the skin, the eyes, the mouth, the throat, uh, abdominal pain, vomiting, a lot of really other unpleasant stuff, heart damage, anemia, liver and kidney damage, facial paralysis, coma, and even death. Simply breathing in Cressels for a short amount of time will result in irritation of the nose and throat. So ingesting it sounds like a very awful and painful way to go. But for a time in the early 1900s, ingesting Lysol was actually the number one way that people would off themselves in places like Australia, which is, I, I don't even know how to really react to that. And that kind of brings us to the meat of things, birth control and feminine hygiene. See, going into the 1920s, distribution companies such as a company by the name of Len and Fink, they began to appeal to very anxious women that were desperate to try and ensure that their men were going to be loyal to them. Through an absolutely massive ad campaign, Len and Fink were able to tap into this anxiety of women and uncertainty by utilizing Lysol, promising that if they used it as a douche, they would be able to reduce the chance of contracting, um, unmentionable diseases, to say the least, while also maintaining what was referred to as feminine daintiness, a way to protect married happiness, and I am not kidding with that quote. For anyone watching this right now, if you want to laugh and simultaneously be disturbed, just look up vintage Lysol ads like from the early 1900s. It's it's genuinely something that is going to blow your mind. It's a little blurry right here because I had to zoom in, but held in a web of indifference. Day after heartbreaking day, I was held in the unyielding web, a web spun by my husband's indifference. I couldn't reach him anymore. Was the fault mine? Well, thinking you know about feminine hygiene, yet trusting to now and then cure can make all the difference in married happiness, as my doctor pointed out. He said, never run to such careless risks. Prescribed Lysol brand disinfectant for douching, always. Like, okay, okay, from the beginning, your husband is indifferent to you in terms of intentions. Like, you, you're, you're perfect in every kind of way at home, but your husband just won't pay attention to you? Maybe it's because your crotch stinks. But I broke through it, she says. 
Oh, the joy of finding Tom's love and close companionship once more. Believe me, I follow to the letter my doctor's advice on feminine hygiene. Always use Lysol for douching. I wouldn't be satisfied now with salt, soda, or even handmade or homemade solutions. Not with Lysol, a proven germ killer that cleans so gently, yet so thoroughly. It's easy to use too, and economical. The very best part is, Lysol really works. I would hope so based off the advertisement, but the reality of the situation was not necessarily. I mean, as you can see from a lot of these ads, everything that was portrayed towards women at this time was putting the problems of married life firmly in their hands. It was their fault that things were wrong and that the husbands were not paying attention to them anymore. But don't worry, this is something that could very easily be fixed by utilizing toxic fluids and injecting them up the place. I don't know what exactly what words I'm able to say here on YouTube. I mean, look at this. Often a wife fails to realize that doubts due to one intimate neglect shut her out from happy married life. A man marries a woman because he loves her. So instead of blaming him, if married love begins to cool, she should question herself. What the hell? The images and things that these companies would utilize would pair this kind of advertising with Hollywood-like figures, with these big taglines, glamorous women's, dramatic phrasing, and it really worked. People bought this in droves. Unfortunately, though, if you remember when I talked about Kressels and how all this stuff could be deadly, then unfortunately, you would also understand that a number of deaths ended up getting reported due to uterine irrigation, as in they were irrigating their uterus with Lysol, which is such a weird phrase to actually say. But the companies at this time knew that there was simultaneously no other real option that people could use, that what they were backing was going to be a winner, and with an extensive ad campaign, then they would be able to turn the public on their side. And so so over the course of the entire Lysol ad campaign, they continuously kept on saying that it was very gentle, that it was non-caustic and would not harm the delicate tissue of the woman, which is just completely not true. Hell, you're probably looking at me at this point and saying, hey, Stack, what the hell? This is stupid. Why the hell would anyone use this when it was very clearly not gentle? It caused pain. It caused irritation. It caused all these things. Why would they actually use this to clean themselves for their husband's attention? Well, that is because this probably wasn't all entirely just about their husband's attention. It was a matter of being birth control. Due to the fact that the majority of female contraceptives were illegal at the time, a lot of different companies were offering alternatives to this, which to many of the women of the time was pretty much a godsend. On these vintage Lysol ads, the words feminine hygiene was essentially a very clever euphemism for contraception, with a number of ads claiming that Lysol passes the crucial test of a germicide, that it's effective in the presence of organic matter, which organic matter and the word germicide. It was another very clever euphemism because it rhymes very closely with another thing with a very similar name that causes people to get pregnant. But what is even more terrible about this entire thing is that the idea of using Lysol as a birth control was not even all that effective because there was a study done in 1933 that showed of 507 women who used Lysol as a form of birth control, this resulted in nearly half of those women getting pregnant anyway, which is really not a good number when you're looking at things in terms of statistics statistics. By the mid-1950s, Lysol had changed its formula, removing Kressels. However, at this point, it didn't really matter because it had already stopped being advertised as a feminine hygiene product anyway, in the wake of hundreds of potential Lysol-related deaths, as well as reported injuries such as inflammation and chemical burns in a place that you do not want to have chemical burns. Originally, many of these poor and unfortunate women were just passed off as being allergic to Lysol, but we know that that's not really the case and that it was a substance that was not actually as gentle and non-caustic as they promised. Although its use as a feminine product would gradually decrease over time, the only real stop in its use as a birth control method would become reality in the 1960s with the development of the birth control pill. The Lysol company of today would uh, much rather forget that any part of this was really a piece of their history. And anyway, that is the end of today's episode. Everyone, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as doing any of that is something that really does help me, and I hope that you all have a good rest of your day. Let me know in the comment section below what it is that we should do next. Goodbye, guys.